Hi guys, how are you? I'm super happy today because I'm going to cook my favorite seafood paella. I cook paella quite often, but not always a seafood paella. Uh, but the thing is that I love most the seafood paella. So today is my favorite dish. Uh, so first about ingredients. I'm going to use different type of seafood and uh, a little bit of vegetables. So of course, uh, famous paella bomba rice and uh, stock is important. So first about seafood. You can actually use a different type of seafood. I'm going to use uh, browns. So I have them here. Uh, my browns, they are with shell. I prefer to cook seafood with shell because uh, shell will give you extra flavor. Then I have, uh, they're like langoustin, yeah? Uh, then I have squid and cuttlefish together here. Then uh, cuttlefish has a uh, uh, very important ingredient for paella. Spleen, it has spleen. And spleen, this spleen, it looks like this. You see, looks delicious. So this is spleen. And it's inside this it's spleen, kind of liquid, kind of juice. And uh, this uh, spleen juice is going to be our sauce for our paella. Then we're going to use uh, sweet pepper. So. I just cut it in tiny pieces, so like this. Then I'm going to use uh, tomato. Uh, get it ready for paella. I just boiled my tomato about five minutes. Then I took off skin, uh, took off seeds. Basically, I left just pulp. And uh, this looks like this. Yeah. So tomato meat. Then rice. Rice. Ah, uh, garlic. Uh, just a little bit of garlic. I'm going to cook paella for five people. And uh, I'm going to use just one clove of garlic. So I cut one clove of garlic, I chop it. And uh, this, uh, this piece of garlic is just with skin. I'm, I, I cut it in the middle and I'm going to do one thing with this. Uh, then, uh, so rice, a really important part. Rice, uh, I have bomba rice. Uh, thing is, if you cannot find bomba rice, you can substitute, the best substitution is arborio rice which is traditionally supposed to use for risotto or if not so take uh, kind of uh, short grain rice yeah um, why rice so important because in paella the most important part of paella is rice but rice itself it's quite tasteless thing and you need to cook your paella your rice in such a way to feel it to feel it with flavor think is that all this seafood all these vegetables it's just they are just tools to fill your rice with flavor. Um, and bomba rice uh, has an ability to absorb all this flavor, to absorb a lot of liquid. And uh, so that's why it's really great for paella. It's Spanish rice. Um, and looks like, I will show you closer. It's short, grain rice. Looks like this. So look here. Yeah. Uh, actually, you can buy it everywhere. Of course, in Spain, it's a niche supermarket because we are a country of paella. But even in the US, you can buy it, sure, in Amazon. So about rice. And then I have uh, fish stock, just fish stock. I have a video about how to cook stock separately, so you can check it out. Uh, so this is about, ah, I have mussels as well. My mussels, they look like this. I steam them just before uh, with a little bit of wine and a little bit of uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil. So basically that's it about my ingredients. So let's start with pan. So I'm going to use this huge pan, despite I'm cooking just for five people. But I think in paella always it's better to have uh, a lot of space. So take the biggest pan you have, even if you have, uh, if, you, if you are cooking just for, for you or for two people. Uh, because uh, as slimmer, paella, paella should be slim. And as a slimmer, it's better. Yeah? So let's start. So first I'm going to take this piece of garlic that I cut before. Just, you see, just garlic with the skin. And I cut it just like this here in the middle. Yeah? And I'm going to scrape my pan with this garlic because I want to give my pan garlic flavor. It's not a lot, it's just a little bit. Thing is that I cannot fry garlic before because garlic is quick and it will be burned, but in this case, uh, uh, it will be fine. So nothing will happen with juice and we will get garlic flavor. So first garlic, then salt, just a bit of salt. Actually, 
you uh, should be careful with salt in seafood paella because in seafood paella, uh, so seafood itself has salt, in natural salt. So be careful when you use salt in your paella. Actually, I'm going to use a tiny amount of salt just now. Uh, it will be just like one pinch. And mostly it's not because I want to make it salty, it's because I want to help my pan start to work uh, like better. Always, when you're frying whatever, whatever you want you fry, steak, chicken, to get your pan ready, it's better to put like a little bit of salt on your pan uh, when it's still cold, so like, like now. Uh, so and now we're going to start to heat our pan, I'm going to switch on fire. Thing is that my fire, uh, pan is huge, but uh, I have two burners, you see, on my stove. This professional paella pay, pay stove, paella. So I have fire here inside, this uh, small one and big one. So 80% of time, and now I'm going to switch on uh, only this fire which is in center. And biggest, the biggest, uh, like all together, we will turn on later, uh, close to close to very end. So let's let's start with this fire. Okay, so we have. We have heat already, so I'm going to use uh, all the time extra virgin olive oil. This is uh, super good olive oil. Um, uh, and really recommend you don't skip this point, because uh, actually olive oil, especially extra virgin olive oil, is made of Mediterranean, of Spanish cuisine, and uh, it's really great for health and uh, it gives your paella extra flavor. So oil, not really a lot. Now I'm waiting until we we'll get like hot a little bit. Yeah, heat is, at the moment is like it's quite high because I want uh, to get my pan and my oil hot. But then I will switch uh, to something between medium and high heat. And now uh, and we are going to start with our beautiful crowns. Yeah, so I'm going to put them like in the shape of flower that so so pay attention there with all their shell legs tail whiskers all these things and all these things will give us really nice flavor so shrink that and uh, we are frying then not a lot I will put a bit of or more oil, not a lot, I think it will be about 5 minutes always when you cook in seafood it's not, it's, it's not long time and now we want to get them fried uh, but not totally fried, we want to get them fried like 80% and then we will take them out of the pan and we will keep frying other things and then we will bring them back close to the end I will bring to this pan And you see they are getting uh, like a little bit white. This is a sign that they are close to be done. So, okay, so have a look. Have a look. They are getting white a bit. I was just holding this plate just uh, to get it uh, dirty, all this stuff around. More oil. Uh, you should be quite generous with oil. Think of that seafood, it's not oily. And only oil you will have in your paella is just uh, oil on which you're cooking. So uh, be really generous with your oil. I think uh, that's enough with our sound. I'm trying to keep shape of flower. Okay. Just to make it nice for you, you know. So that's it, that's enough. I'm going to take it out and uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to take them out in the same way they were before. And then I will keep going with uh, Langoustin. You can use instead of langoustin, you can use crawfish. You can uh, just stay with only chunks. 
where it heat more oil. More oil. And this one. As well, even less. Again, these guys, I need one of the They are, uh, they are quite small. They are not like huge, the size is like more like this. And, but you can use any. Normally if I, you're not going to use Dixie food because uh, when you have Dixie food, actually you have uh, more meat but less flavor. When you have small seafood, you have uh, less meat but more flavor. As we need flavor for our fire, it's like common and it's better to use uh, small or medium seafood. And uh, when the skin, crayfish, uh, you're going to use with shell, with all these clubs. You see? So, that was very I just want to take some oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just to show you how it looks. You see? It looks nice. Yes, all this glass. Okay, that's enough. So I'm going to take them out of my roll. And the next step is going to be uh, cut all fish and stick together. We want that to make it caramelize, you know, to get flavor in our pan. And uh, then we will take it off. Because we cannot keep it for a long time. We cannot keep it longer because next we are going to fry vegetables. Because we just overcook our squid and cut off fish. So this is, this flex is squid. And this, like, this flex is cut off fish. If you cannot find cut off fish, you can use just squid. In, like, instead, in this step. Yeah? I feel that it's just not. I'm going to take squid and cut off this off and we'll keep uh, going with our vegetables. Okay. I just want to same time, I will start to fry sweet pepper here. And while sweet pepper will be frying, I will take off the rest of uh, sweet and pepper dish. So more oil. Sweet, pe sweet pepper should be fried, should be caramelized as well, should be fried pretty well. Uh, so don't leave it raw. We want we want it to look like golden with uh, like this a little bit brown skin. It will take you uh, maybe a bit longer than, uh, for example, sweet or browns, about three, uh, maybe four minutes. By the way, I would not recommend you to use a lot of different vegetables. Like uh, a lot of people, they eager to put like something else, like more vegetables, like. Uh, for example, meat paella is uh, common to put flat beans or peas. But think is that in secret paella not, because we want to focus on secret flavor. Uh, secret flavor is intensive flavor. And uh, with sweet pepper, for example, with garlic, with tomato, we want just to highlight uh, flavor of seafood. But if we put a lot of different other vegetables, we will like distract from uh, secret flavor. So, that's enough. I would recommend you to stay with sweet pepper, tomato and garlic. So my sweet pepper I feel is done and I'm going to make like hole to put it around to make space for to make space for my garlic and the uh, oil in center. And this tiny amount of garlic go inside. Yeah. Garlic super quick. 
20 seconds, that's enough. You can even like press a little bit uh, to make it even smaller. I feel already garlic flavor, so that's it. So when you play with uh, garlic, obviously, that's, that's, it's done. Yeah, so that means let's push, you remember that heat is in center. So let's push our garlic out of the center where it's no fire, because our fire is just in the center. Not to get it burned, then again a bit of oil, and we will continue with tomato. Uh, so, tomato, uh, like trying to give me a juice. I don't want tomato juice. I will try to take only tomato meat. We don't want tomato juice because I think it's the tomato juice makes rice sticky. We don't want to have our rice thicker. So I left juice, you see? Juice I don't want. I left juice and uh, I cook just meat. And then I'm going to smash my tomato. Uh, basically, we are doing tomato paste just directly in our pan. Just doing like this. And then next step, I'm going to put spices. Uh, I forgot to mention about spices when I was speaking about ingredients. So, uh, about spices, actually not a lot. Only famous saffron, which is supposed to be obviously in seafood paella. And then uh, sweet paprika. As well, another famous uh, Spanish spice, sweet smoked paprika. Actually, if you like spicy food, you can substitute sweet paprika with spicy paprika. But normally Spanish cuisine is not like super spicy. And uh, traditionally we use sweet paprika. And by the way, sweet paprika we use actually like almost everywhere. In a lot of dishes. And it's really great spice. We don't use a lot of black pepper, for example. But sweet paprika goes like almost in each, in each dish. So tomato, and just inside tomato I'm going to put sweet paprika. And think it's... Uh, you should be quite quick with sweet paprika. So I'm going to put one teaspoon, so like this, and I will put it just inside the tomato, and I will mix it immediately, no, uh, because I don't want to leave sweet paprika on the pan, because it can get burned really fast. So sweet paprika, we are mixing it with tomato, and next, actually, we are getting ready uh, to put our rice. Uh, as I know that after rice, I'm going to put stock. Uh, you need uh, to heat your stock. I need to heat my stock. So I'm going now to put my stock. So it, it was hot, but while we were doing things, uh, it's, uh, got, it got cold a little bit. So I'm going to heat it again uh, to bring it to almost boiling. Not to lose the temperature in our pan. So now I'm going just, just a second, I will switch on uh, stock. So here we are, and now we are going to uh, put our rice. As I'm cooking for just just like this, I'm, as I'm cooking for uh, five people, so this amount of rice is 500 grams. If uh, to speak in uh, US uh, unit uh, system, it will be like three and a half ounce for each person. So 100 gram or three and a half ounce for each person. And then about the proportion with stock, I'm going to fry my rice about uh, like two minutes because I want uh, that my rice absorb all this uh, flavor after seafood, we're frying seafood, we're frying browns, we're frying uh, langoustines, uh, we were frying squid and cuttlefish. So we have a lot of seafood flavor. And our rice now absorbing all this flavor. And uh, at this time, uh, as well, see uh, fish stock is getting getting ready. So it will be like more or less at the same time. I will finish with uh, frying rice and uh, fish stock with the pot. So and you see, uh, rice it's not it's not white already. Uh, so generally, it's becoming orange even much before you put saffron. So a lot of people think that it's like it's saffron makes very very orange, but not only. Uh, uh, one second, I'm going to take stock. So this is our stock, I'll put it here. And uh, now we are going, by the way, once you put rice, no more oil. Because the rice absorbing whatever it has. And if you put oil uh, right now, it will be 
would be like too too fat. So now we're going to bring back our our squid and cattle fish. And as well, we are going to make one interesting thing. So we are going to add our sauce. You remember we had spleen of cuttlefish. I'm going to make a slower heat. So this spleen of cuttlefish, so it looks like this. You see, and inside, you see this, inside it has like brown liquid. So this brown liquid is exactly this sauce. In Spanish it sounds like salsa de sepia. So cuttlefish is sepia. So spleen of cuttlefish, uh, we call it salsa de sepia. Sauce of, sepia, of cuttlefish. So, and I'm going to squeeze now this sauce inside our rice and it will give us super great flavor so for me uh, flavor of uh, spleen of cuttlefish is exactly uh, exactly paella flavor and uh, this spleen so meat what what so i'm squeezing this brown liquid i want to just mix it a little bit okay it's almost done I have here around amazing flavor. Its flavor is strong. So if to try, if to try it directly, so I can try just for you directly. Mm. It's super salty. It's bitter. It, it has like flavor of uh, ocean water. So when you're swimming uh, in ocean, in sea, you have some water in, inside your mouth. So this is this is this is flavor. As well, it's very close to flavor of oysters of uh, uni. So flavor is really great. So and now it's empty. You see, I squeeze it like it's empty. We don't have nothing more. But anyway, I'm going to put this. Uh, this, but this, this is not to throw away. It's so uh, meat. We are going to put it inside and to use it together with all other meat we have. I'm going to take just scissors and to cut it in several pieces, just like this. Yeah, there we go. And now we are going to put stock. Let me all in my hands this paper and now we're going to add some so I will mix uh, a little bit to allow rice to absorb flavor of cuttlefish and we will go with stock here we are so this is our stock I want to show you this is our stock and I'm uh, going to Pour it like all together, not like little by little, like maybe you saw it in risotto. No, all together. Okay. Basically, how to do fish stock? Uh, you're going to uh, take. So some some fish stuff like, uh, which is you not which you maybe you're not going to eat. So when you're eating prawns, uh, safe shell. When you're eating uh, lobster, so safe skin, safe shell, safe gloves. Take uh, when you're eating fishes, so keep hats. So you're going to take all these things and to boil with water and some vegetables for a long time. So this 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 is it. So once we put stock, we need highest heat you have. I, you remember, I was using like heat in the center, so I'm going to switch on all my fire I have. Because we want, we want to bring it uh, boiling. Okay, I'm increasing central heat and I'm going to switch on this heat. And as my, as my heat super strong, it will get boiling super fast. So now I just spread it like more or less everywhere around and uh, I'm waiting until it will get wet. I have plenty of plates here while I'm using time to open up a bit. Just pick it up. So you see, it's getting boiling. It's boiling. The thing is that why it's not a dish uh, that you are Searing a lot when you're cooking maybe first time. Now, like I cook like million pies, I think. Uh, now, so I, I know how it works. But maybe when you are doing this first time, you will uh, 
the phrase that it can get uh, burned in the bottom as it's uh, boiling hard. So only thing you can do, you can just uh, position the spoon like this, you can like spray bottom. Just to check, check out if it's getting stuck or not. If not, so at the moment like, we have a lot of liquid, so obviously not. But maybe in two minutes it will start to get stuck a little bit. So in this place where it's getting stuck, you just you can clean it, you know, like scraping bottom. But you're not like mixing it, you're not moving it around. So let just let it be, let it be. And uh, traditionally it's supposed to be high heat, about uh, like seven ten minutes, depends on your heat. And then um, you are going to switch on uh, medium. So as you see, liquid going down, liquid uh, liquid is going to be absorbed. Uh, as you see, less liquid, so less fire. Less liquid, liquid, less fire. But classically, just for you to understand how it works, like seven, eight minutes high heat, then let's say seven minutes low heat. Uh, as well, depends this time and proportion. As well, depends on uh, a lot of things. Uh, how big your pan, how strong your heat, uh, things like this, what kind of rice you are using. So all these things uh, make difference and influence on proportion and influence on time you're cooking. But uh, if you are doing this first time for new rice, so you need to be like more attentive to amount of liquid and to uh, not allow it to get stuck. Like sometimes you're just checking out. So in my case, it's not stuck. Yeah, absolutely. So now it's time to put our saffron. Uh, I have it here. So this is my saffron. Looks like this. You see this uh, uh, sticks on the bottom of this bottle. I will show you. It's not a lot. I will put just like one pinch. Something like this. Like this. Have a look. Thing is that uh, it's. It's uh, just to be sure if you are going to put enough. You can think that like uh, it's always in six. It's supposed to be like six, seven, six for each person, something like this. And then when you put supper, you are going to smash it. Like I will like smash it with my finger. So you, are, you need to, but just before, to do like this, you know, smash it. And then to put inside your paella. And just let it be. By the way, I seed mussels before, yeah, and uh, with wine, and I have mussel juice. You see? So I'm going to use this juice together with stock to get my paella extra flavor and extra liquid. So this liquid uh, from your mussels you need to calculate as well when you are thinking about proportion. Usually, proportion, classical proportion, is one size when you are not cooking with such huge pan like mine. When you are cooking with ordinary pan, for example, like size like this, if it, uh, if it is going to be size like this, and if it's going to be uh, for two people, for example, uh, you will you will take one size of rice, two and a half sizes of stock. Uh, but in my case, it's much more. So for 500 grams, I took two liters of stock, yeah, so it's like four times. Hmm? So we are boiling, and uh, so we are watching if it's not stuck, but it, it takes some time. It's very interesting to know that paella, uh, from the beginning, was a dish for poor people. It's quite curious, you know, so now it's like, wow, one, one of the most famous dishes uh, in Spain. Uh, it could be quite expensive, depends on the food you have inside. Uh, but from the beginning, it was just food for poor people. Uh, it appeared in the Valencia area um, in the middle of 19th century, so it's quite ancient. And uh, just it was uh, like big families, a lot of children and villages, they had uh, high reward. And after a heavy day, they just need something, some dish to cook first with all ingredients that they had. Uh, and basically it was whatever they had, they just put together with rice and they cooked with uh, this big pan. And by the way, uh, the name of this pan is paella, paella or paella. And the name of uh, dish, that's why, was transferred from the name of pan. So I want to start to reduce my fire, maybe little by little, because I see that already liquid is like 
Okay, so that's all, that's all, that's all, that's all. Um, if you have big fan and if you don't have uh, so big stove, uh, exists uh, like substitution. For example, you can cook with your normal gas stove. Only, so you will not have so big fire. But using just one fire, uh, you can just move your pan. For example, your fire will be like in some part of this big pan. You can just move your pan around like this. Get in your paella uh, cooked from all sides. And you, while you are cooking, okay, okay it's a work, but while you are cooking, just move it around. So this is like an option. Another option, it's uh, pretty great if you have a uh, barbecue place. So you can, for example, put just, just this huge pan on barbecue fire. And uh, if you have wood, wood fire, even better, because wood fire is considered to be super great for paella, and it will give you like kind of smoke flavor. So, now it's the time we, we are going to bring back our seafood, which we fried before. And we're going to uh, put it in kind of nice way. It's, it's going to be our like decoration part. So let's start uh, with our crowns. So I'm like constantly reducing fire. So let's start with our crowns. And we will make flour and sand. Like this. It's really hot here, you know. <laughs> I'm super hot. Fire is, this, this fire, uh, it's really fish. And this stove, by the way, I think even in the US you can buy it by Amazon. Uh, and it's not expensive at all. The name is Paellero again. And um, you can use it not only for Paella. So when you cook in something like, to substitute, to substitute on, to use like an alternative to barbecue outside. And uh, here in Spain, this huge stove, like mine, can be different sizes. But here, here in Spain, the uh, price for this uh, stove is about 50 euro, so not expensive at all, you see. And then you need a, a bottle of gas, and that's it, yeah. So first uh, our crown, then let's move on with our guys. Angustines, crawfish, whatever you have. I and mean, when trying like to press it a little bit inside, you know, because they are done, but you know, to give them a little bit more temperature. They are done, but they are like 90% done. So that's why we are not cooking so long from the beginning, because we are going to cook them again. So I think I have like size. And if you have some liquid after this rice, so you can put it inside because it's the juice after this seafood. This would, would correct this decoration a bit. Yeah? But you see, I'm not mixing my paella. I uh, don't want to press rice. I don't want uh, to, like, to smash it. And uh, so it's a way to cook paella. Maybe if you are cooking first time, you will have to scrape it a little bit so to do it, not like me, but after several times, you will understand how it works, and finally you will come to this way of cooking. Yes, I think like this. Okay. Okay. Just trying to find the right symmetrical position for the langoustines. Actually, this, I, I'm calling them langoustines, but in Spain, we call them cigalas. It's like small lobsters, not real lobsters. And it's really popular. So you can fry them, you can boil them, um, all the things. Yeah. You can flake them. Uh, by the way, I have a video, super easy. Uh, you are flaving them just and frying them about like two minutes and they have delicious flavor. So you have a video about this, so check it out. Yeah, so and now let's, uh, move on to 
Ah, by the way, always when you're cooking, it's good to have a glass of wine. I'm really guessing hot here. I think it will be good for me. So cheers. Salut. Yeah? And uh, so let's move on to our muscles. So you remember our muscles, which I seen just before. I'm going to make like the last decoration. So you see each muscle. So and I'm going to do it just like this. You see each muscle has like two parts, yeah, obviously. And uh, I'm going to open it and to break one part off. And I will use just this part for decoration, yeah. And I'm going to put this muscle just like this. I'm going to reduce heat. You see, I almost don't have liquid. So that means that my heat is supposed to be down, 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 and down. And uh, I am going to put uh, muscles like around all this composition. Just like this. There we go. Yeah, yeah different side. Now with uh, this lockdown time, not so easy to get seafood. We have, we still have good choice of seafood, not like always, so kind of less. Uh, but I mean that in Spain we have great mussels, and uh, this this one that I have now, they are like uh, I would say smaller than normal. So usually mussels you can buy here they are bigger and. Um, so they are delicious. This, this one, they, they are going to be fine. They are, they, are, they are really good, they have great flavor, and they have, I, I feel this amazing smell now, but I'm just saying that it's like, of course, now facing all these circumstances with this lockdown, uh, coronavirus quarantine, it's, it's, not, it's not the same choice, unfortunately. But we are getting better already. I hope in uh, one month, well, get our lives back. So, here we go. I don't know where to put. I have some muscles more, but I don't have space already. And you see, uh, my uh, stock, my record is almost absorbed. That means that uh, I'm close to be done. Thing is, that process is like this. Uh, by the way, when pan is big, so you need to balance because you know anyway. Uh, in some part you can have more liquid, in some part you have less liquid. So it makes sense to move around your pan just to find the right position. For example, now I feel that like from this side I have uh, more liquid, so I'm going to move it around. To move this, uh, to like to correct the balance, you know, to like this. Mm -hmm. Stock plays, uh, stock of course plays super important role. Uh, Apart of seafood and rice, so it's super super important. Uh, stock the main source of flavor, uh, one of the main sources, and. Um, uh, thing is that you see now uh, this stock it's uh, there's an absorb and it's not liquid anymore. So when the stock is really rich, it's not liquid anymore, and when it's absorbing these um, things, uh, uh, this uh, fat, this uh, this uh, this cream, it has like creamy texture. This creamy texture of the stock is becoming like a liquor. And uh, it's becoming to cover each seat of rice, like around. Um, so uh, it is kind of uh, car caramelization process. So protein uh, of seafood, 
and sugar from vegetables. They are mixed together, and this uh, this result and this caramelizing of this uh, of the fish stock. And uh, so this fish, this caramelized fish stock, which covered like in some, especially in some places, each seed of rice. Uh, the name is Sokarate, and it's the most beautiful part of Paella. And uh, it's very really famous for the Sokarate. I'm going to put my fire now. The way is to cook Paella, so then like eight, seven, uh, nine, ten minutes high heat, then about again eight, seven minutes low heat. And then uh, before to serve, before to eat, you're supposed to cover Paella with towel, some, some towel, some kitchen towel, something like this, to cover, paella, to cover paella, to give, to switch a fire, to give uh, your paella rest. And uh, this rest can last about, uh, from five to 10 minutes. And in this time, uh, your rice is still working, it's still hot. And uh, why, why towel, why not wait? Because we want some steam to go out and some steam to stay in. And as well, this caramelization, this saccharate appeared exactly in this, last uh, minutes uh, this is like the last step of uh, paella cooking by the way if you want to have uh, this like crossed crispy bottom which uh, uh, as well so famous part of paella uh, of course you was you were not steer, steering pan so it will be uh, crossed in the bottom but the uh, thing is uh, that you can even increase this uh, uh, cross, uh, you can increase fire, uh, like I'm going to do now, for 20 seconds at the end. So you're going to put highest heat now. Just a second. So we are going to put highest heat. To keep this highest heat for seconds, not, lo not long, maybe 20 seconds, not to get your fire burned. And then at the same time uh, to increase temperature, then to switch it off and to cover your paella with towel. So I'm going to do it. So it's not again. So I'm going to switch it. And I'm going to cover my paella with towel. Just like this. And then I will keep like this about five minutes. Yeah, and uh, while it's very difficult to decorate paella with lemon, I'm going now, when we are waiting until paella resting, I'm going to cut lemon. Uh, actually, it's not, it's not traditional to squeeze lemon inside pan, and uh, it's quite understandable, because if you squeeze lemon inside your pan, you will have a uh, flavor of lemon mostly, because lemon is so strong. Uh, but it's very common, to, uh, it's very traditional to decorate, so cut lemon so in, so, in some nice way and to decorate your paella with uh, this uh, cut lemon. I'm going to show you uh, how to, how like it's traditional to cut lemon. Here, just a second, I will organize me some ways like this. So I'm going to cut, to cut my lemon in the middle. I will do a cut like this and like this. You see, like this and like this. It's going to be zigzag. Yeah? And then we do it here. Yeah, here we go, and then so it's cut around and then to open. Yeah, it looks like this, looks really nice. Yeah, and this lemon, it will be our decoration part for our pie. So let's uh, decorate our, our pie, yeah? So towels off, we don't need them anymore. We will put lemon somewhere, for example, here and here. By the way, to, uh, if you have like like big part of lemon here and uh, you can cut it all with it, you can cut just like this.
Ja. Enga Passi. So, let's put a bit of Passi. I got some Passi here as well. I think so. I got my Passi flowers enough. Yeah. Here we are. This is our paella. I want to show you uh, it closer. Look at this beauty. It looks super nice. It's really heavy, <laughs> I can tell you. And I'm going to try it. So you see, by the way, I, I want just to show it closer. I want to show you this part which, uh, which has so character. You see, in the, this uh, external part, it's even no noticeable a lot of this liquor, how it looks. And I will try it exactly there, and I will show you closer. Like a little bit crunchy on the bottom, so it looks like this. So all this liquid around each seat, this is our famous sakarate. And it's supposed to be delicious, I'm sure. I have amazing smell here around. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this, this is amazing. This is amazing. I need some wine. Cheers. Salud, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I need to stop it because I'm going to eat it right now here. <laughs> Ciao. Mm. Ciao.